Hi, my name is Trovin Wong and I want to talk about shooting video with Olympus OMD EM5 Mark III. I did a short video with the EM5 Mark III which I posted up yesterday. Check the video up here if you haven't seen it. The short video was filmed entirely on the Olympus OMD EM5 Mark III. Now before we dive too deep, here are some disclaimers. I am an Olympus visionary and ambassador to the Olympus brand. Also, I am not a cinematographer, I'm not a videographer, and when it comes to shooting video, I am still a beginner and I'm learning. There are a lot of things that I do not know about filming, and at this stage, I'm merely experimenting, I'm doing what I can with the EM5 Mark III based on my limited knowledge and experience in videography. Therefore, for a more thorough review of how the video capabilities of the EM5 Mark III performs, I suggest that you look at other YouTubers or reviewers who are more experienced when it comes to video shooting. Originally, I intended to skip this video part of my review for the EM5 Mark III, but then I also realized that some people may want to hear what I have to say. And it has happened a few times before that I didn't mention anything about video shooting and I have been slammed before that I was the first few people to use a new product from Olympus and I didn't put enough effort to test every single aspect of the camera. So here is my non-professional take on how the video performs on the EM5 Mark III. First of all, a little bit of background with the video that I did. So the very short video, Robin in the City, was filmed entirely in Kuala Lumpur. If you haven't figured out from the title itself, it simply means Robin, which refers to me, being in the city, which is Kuala Lumpur. I come from East Malaysia, the island of Borneo. I was born and raised in Kuching. So having moved to Kuala Lumpur and work here, I have been here for so many years. This place never failed to amaze me every single time I step into the city center. So the entire short film was made to show my daily routine of me going into a train, taking a journey into the city center, and the sense of awe and wonder whenever I look up at the tall skyscrapers and the feeling of being in such a huge metropolitan city was just overwhelming. Although I've been in Kuala Lumpur for a while now, that sense of wonder never went away. Also moving into the second part of the video where it was heavy rain all over the city. That's right, that is something that I encountered as well. Every time I'm in the city, sometimes I was caught unprepared and it just rained cats and dogs. This is a typical weather for a tropical country like Malaysia and yes, rain happened a lot in the city and I'm always caught wet. I think overall there is no deeper message or layers of ideas behind that short video. I'm not deep like that. But I don't want to portray a feeling of loneliness if you can actually get the vibe from that video. So the concept of the video, the idea behind the video is fairly simple and straightforward. It's me going into the cities. So instead of using myself, I used the Robin Lego brick hats, which was a birthday present from a friend, Alan Ang. Hi Alan from Kuching. Thank you so much. I'm loving that birthday present I'm carrying with me everywhere I go to. And the scenes of me being at different locations in Kuala Lumpur, these are actual locations that I visit from time to time. So I just put them all together into a short video. So we get Robin in the city. In terms of execution, the video was shot entirely handheld and the flip screen was very useful for me to get very low angle or high angle shots. I was particularly amazed by the image stabilization for the video. This is what Olympus called the OMD movie. It basically refers to stabilized footage. While the stabilization effect is nowhere near a professional gimbal or steady cam, but I do feel that for someone like me who is very new to videography, who is not doing cinematography full-time, I'm a, a professional photographer, but I do a little bit of video from time to time. I need to film some short footages. Not having professional equipment to support my movements, that built-in 5-axis image stabilization was a lifesaver. And I admit, my camera movement throughout the video was not very smooth. They were not very cinematic. But hey, I'm still learning. All these are very new to me, and I'm slowly getting better day by day. Keeping that in mind, I thought that the camera did a great job at stabilizing my footages. Whether I'm walking around, or when I'm panning the camera, or moving it up and down, all the shots look so steady. 
And I think I speak for a lot of people out there, content creators, photographers, and videographers alike. Not everyone are movie makers. Not everyone are in to make Hollywood movies, right? We don't use cinema cameras, and we don't have a huge production team behind our backs with professional equipment. Sometimes we just want to create simple content for YouTube. And I think that the 5 axis image stabilization does a splendid job. Certainly for someone like me, I'm a street photographer, I move around a lot. I don't want to carry a gimbal with me all the time. The gimbal is not light and it takes space in my camera bag. If I'm out street shooting, I just want to carry one camera and one lens. But sometimes I don't want to do video. That's when the image stabilization comes in handy. The EM5 Mark III has two movie stabilization modes, MS1 and MS2. MS stands for movie stabilization. When we activate the movie stabilization one, we have the mechanical image stabilization, which is the actual stabilization happening, moving around the sensor physically, plus electronic stabilization, where the camera will stabilize the footage by processing it digitally. On the other hand, the second mode, MS2, only stabilizes the footage with the mechanical image stabilization and not using any electronic stabilization. I have used both MS1 and MS2 in the short video. For 95% of the shots, I'm using the MS1 because I'm doing everything handheld. However, there are wide angle shots of the building. If you see a lot of wide angle shots where I want to fit as much as possible, I switch to MS2. And the reason I did that was so that I can fit as much as I can. If I use MS1, I get that slight cropped and I lose that wide angle effect. So sometimes I need to use MS2 to fit as much as I can within a frame. The entire video was shot with autofocus. Yes, I set the autofocus mode to CAF, continuous autofocus, and I use the touchscreen to place the focusing area to exactly where I want it to be in focus. I face a challenge where it is very difficult for me to judge whether my video is perfectly in focus or not because I was shooting out under the bright sun and the small LCD screen wasn't perfect for me to judge critical focus. Unlike when I shoot a photograph, I can zoom in and check for critical focus. I cannot do that with video. But thankfully, 99% of my footages were in perfect focus. And this shows how amazingly reliable the autofocus is. Wherever you want it to be in focus, just touch the area on the screen and the camera will work its magic and get that in focus. And coming from someone who doesn't shoot video all the time, I don't do a lot of video work. And still being able to get such a high hit rate when it comes to autofocus accuracy, it shows that the EM5 Mark III is really foolproof and it's good for dummies like me, someone who is so new to videography, to just grab the camera, go and get in focus footages with very little worry. I also realized that I didn't test the autofocus of the video in low light shooting condition. I haven't had the chance to, but if I do get to test it, maybe I'll make a video about that. Shooting a video of maybe a live music performance in a bar. That would be awesome. Speaking of the video quality, the image quality of the video, I don't really think I have much to say. I don't have anything to compare with since I don't do a lot of video work, but I was generally very happy to see what comes on my computer monitor. I was shooting cinema 4K for all the footages, except the slow motion video, which was shot at 120 frames at full HD. So that's like only two or three scenes, whereas everything else was in cinema 4K. I shot the entire video in the picture mode natural. Yes, I know some of you will advise me, oh Robin, but you should use the flat profile. Yes, the EM5 Mark III has a flat profile which will allow for easier color grading if you want to do a lot of color grading or color editing for your footages. But I generally just left the colors intact. What you saw from the video was straight out of the camera with zero color grading, but I did change the exposure, the brightness and contrast a little bit so that it looked more consistent from beginning to the end. I did not touch the colors. The color balance, what you saw from the video, were exactly what came out straight from the camera's video capabilities. Unfortunately, Olympus didn't include the OM Log 400 profile from the E1X and E1 Mark II. But you do get the flat profile which should give you a lot of room to work with when it comes to recovery from shadows and the highlight regions. Although I was shooting in some really stark and high contrast scenes, not using the flat profile, 
when I was just using the picture mode natural. Olympus handles the highlight really well. The roll off wasn't sudden. You can see that there was maybe some minor clipping, but it wasn't very jarring. And there were a lot of details preserved in the shadow area as well. Generally, the video does a wonderful job at maintaining a balanced look from footage to footage. Also, truth to be told, why I didn't do any color grading or why I didn't use the flat profile, I don't even know how to do color grading at this point, being totally honest here. Now, one downside that I must point out to you if you want to use EM5 Mark III for any video shooting is the limited battery life. The EM5 Mark III utilizes the smaller battery, which is the BLS50. Now, this battery allows me to shoot about 30 minutes of footages before it flattens out. Of course, the 30 minutes of footage wasn't continuous. It was like five seconds of footage here, 20 seconds of footage there, 10 seconds of footage here, 15 seconds of footage there, and maybe 30 seconds of footage here, fiddling with the settings, previewing, you know, just generally seeing how the framing looks like. Well, I killed the camera's battery in about a few hours. But still, if you want to do anything serious with the EM5 Mark III when it comes to video, even a shoot in cinema 4K, I strongly suggest that you buy a lot of spare batteries for a full video shoot with you not constantly worrying about running out of batteries. And then there is that slow motion 120 frames per second. I admit that maybe some of you want to see a lot more of the slow motion in action, but I also try to do some slow motion there and here, and I just don't find them fitting into the entire video. I know that the slow motion will make the scenes look epic, but seriously, if there's too many slow motion going on, the video will look quite bad as well. Some people, they just do slow motion for the sake of slow motion, but then it has no meaning, it doesn't add anything to the video, it just makes everything look worse. So less slow motion for me. I only added a few slow motion effects where there's the water dripping and the rain part where, you know, that's where you get to see how the 120 frames per second works. The entire video was shot using three lenses and the one lens that I used for 95% of the footages, that one lens was the Olympus 17 f1.8. For wide angle shots of the buildings and the cityscape, I was using the 12mm f2. And for tight shots of the Lego Robin with the blurry background, and of course for some distant shots of the people running around in the rain, there was 45 f1.8. And I purposely chose all the small prime lenses to work with the EM5 Mark III because these small lenses fit the camera so perfectly that I can just hold it around, run around, move around with it, and I don't feel any strain at all. I can go low, I can go high, I can do anything I want, and it's just so easy to handle. And this is the complete opposite of what you see from a full production team where they have a huge cinema camera on a huge cage, on a gimbal, and you know, there's just so many people operating just one camera at once. Whereas with the EM5 Mark III, of course, I'm not comparing this to a professional setup. This is not meant to be compared that way, but I'm not doing anything professional with my YouTube video as well. This is just me conveying a message to you. And yes, using this camera on small prime lenses, just hand-holding this small camera and small lens combination going around, it was such a joy and ease to use. If you are one of the vloggers who like to hold a camera with one hand and just go around and, and just do vlogging like that, then having a 12mm f2 lens, the wide angle lens with the EM5 Mark III will help you to do that with ease and you will still get a super stabilized footage. I don't see myself doing that. I prefer to put my camera on a tripod so that I don't have to worry about dropping the camera accidentally. But hey, you're free to choose whatever method you want to vlog. That's all I have to share about the Olympus EM5 Mark III's video shooting capabilities from a non-professional perspective. I simply love the image stabilization and the fact that the camera is small and light. I can just run around, just do everything handheld and still get stabilized footage. That's amazing for me, for someone who started out who doesn't know much about videography. And the autofocus just works. For someone who has very little experience shooting video to get such high hit rates, I think anyone can use the autofocus with high chance of success. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out how it works. 
And I think the image quality of the video comes coming out straight from the camera. It's just fantastic. You can work with that without much color grading. But if you want to do color grading, there is a flat profile in the EM5 Mark III, which will enable to get the best out of the camera. If you want to get the EM5 Mark III for video shooting, may I suggest that you get the compact and light prime lenses. There are so many to choose from and they will fit the EM5 Mark III's small form factor perfectly. I hope you have found this video useful. I hope you've enjoyed watching it. If you have any more questions, please leave it in the comments below. I'll try my best to answer them. I will definitely see you again in the next video. Until then, please go out and take more photographs. Bye-bye.